What was funny was when the so like I didn't mean to interrupt, but speaking of alcohol, yeah. my experience was when the when the Kurdish would come in, the Kurdish truck drivers were coming in from Tajir or Bill, like the ground convoys. Yeah. yeah. Well, this one guy comes down. He's coming down. He comes down the wrong way, and we're down there. We're like working on some equipment. We're doing something kind of minuscule or whatever. He pulls up and he gets out and he's got his papers in his hand. He don't know where to go. He needs to go to the AHA, right? And for okay, ammunition holding area. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So the ammunition holding area for people that don't understand, it's a kind of like a fortified area, right? That we put in our large munitions, like you know, triple seven type rounds, house rounds, for lack of a better term. That's where you're going to find like your high Mars rockets. Yeah. And pretty oh, much yeah. when I say yeah, yeah, fortified, brother. it's going to be, you know, they're going to be behind some HESCOs because we're trying to mitigate the risk of them. You know, we're trying to contain a potential explosion if you get attacked. But anyway, so the guy comes down the road and I, I can tell what's wrong. He's lost. He doesn't know where to go. And he's, he's got his paper in his hand. He's speaking, you know, and I, I don't know what he's saying. I don't have an interpreter with me. And I'm, I'm just like, let me hop in your truck and I'll show you where to go, you know? <laughs> Somehow he figured it out that that was like, hey, this guy's going to hop in. So I hop in the cab with him, dude. First of all, the guy's got – it looks like curtains. And you remember the fucking like tassels and shit that they had in their windshields, bro? Like yeah. they had like this much <laughs> to see out the windshield. He's got his music blaring. And he reaches over, dude. He pulls out like a bottle of vodka. He's like, <laughs> you know, he's putting it in my face, man. And I'm like, no, man, I can't do it, you know? <laughs> can't do it you know wink, wink. <laughs> and you know of yeah, course, I, of course i wouldn't drink the vodka i obviously no you never NCO would, do would that. never do that but no you're you're <laughs> a good human being and you you listen to every rule ever just yeah to I let never everyone would. know that the howitzer rounds that he was carrying made it to the aha uh-huh safely and everybody <laughs> made it there in one piece oh, because i'll never miss forget you guys. Um, he was drunk driving with howitzer rounds <laughs> bro and what, what was funny about it was the fact that like when he come down there, like he was just so frustrated. And at first we didn't know what he wanted, that he cut the lock on the back of the truck. Right. Because they had like those special locks that only are, you know what I'm talking about? Like it was, it was like yeah. a special lock that the people up there would probably have the access to. I don't know. Right. Yeah. But anyway, right. So he opens it and all I see is just like H E rounds. And I'm like, I see Willie Pete. And I'm like, Oh, you need to go to the AHA. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, Please, oh, you need to go to hurry. the AHA. It's on the other side, bro. Come on. Let me take you there. And yeah, so... don't detour, by the way. Just go ahead and go right there. Don't, don't go anywhere else. <laughs> but anyways, That's my, crazy. my little funny alcohol story with the Kurdish that I absolutely <laughs> love. And if there's any Kurdish watching, I fucking love you. But anyway. No, yeah. I, I like I said, I just remember hearing about the Turkish liquor. I, I, I know that the... Our our translator Dale on our truck at one point whipped out a bottle of something and, and I remember him tapping me on my left shoulder and like putting it in my face. It was like a flask and I was like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, he barely spoke English, but he was somehow our interpreter, which probably in hindsight wasn't the best. But he, that guy was awesome. What we call him? Like Bob or something? We right? call well one of them. We called LeBron. LeBron. Bro. He was in our truck. That was that was our main dude. Because LeBron, he had, why we called him that? Because he had, I think it was because he had basketball shoes on one day. Oh my god! Fuck dude, I yes. forgot about That's that. Awesome. He was the same guy. Just, one day we got stuck in traffic, like terrible yeah. traffic. Because yep. to put him to like things happen around us at all the time. We had done a bridge system into Raqqa that had let people escape Raqqa, yep. which ended up creating a huge traffic jam. So we ended up yep. being stuck in, in said traffic jam. And, that one I have videos of. Yeah. I have videos of our truck yeah. of the traffic and us having to go because remember we were, we bypassed on the shoulder and we were kind of freaking out because we were like, shit, the only IDs we found so far have been on the shoulder yeah. of the road. And so we were a little nervous. LeBron jumps out of the vehicle because he sees us getting yeah. frustrated at the traffic and he runs yeah. down with his AK <laughs> in front of our vehicle. And if anybody wouldn't move, he'd run up to the window and start screaming at him with his AK. <laughs> Got that we, I know, pass, we, baby. Yeah, because because we were like <laughs> me, me and Corporal K were like, how do we tell them we don't want to do that? We don't want people to think that we're threatening them. Because I and then I remember passing on to the trucks behind us and to you as well, Dale. Because you were the gunner, weren't you? Most of the time in our truck, me or you, yeah, weren't you no, the gunner? Or who? No, was because I was messing with the radios all the time. Sergeant R was in the truck in the gunner. Is he our gunner? Yep. Yep. Okay. So him and the other gunners, I remember telling them wave at everyone be very nice and wave and in some of the videos that i have on and i'll share them with you guys if you don't have them that incident where it was like a six maybe a 10 mile traffic jam 
you just see our gunners waving aggressively at everyone because we were trying to like be nice to balance the dude with the AK-47. It was vaguely threatening because you're sitting there like any there's hundreds of eagles in this backup. You're like any one of these are about to go off. <laughs> so you're just like, Ooh. well, to be honest, it was like it was the looks right because a lot oh, of people were it. smiling and happy, and then you, the next car was just dead eyes just staring into your soul or we like oh shit one time we went through a town and usually they'd be like oh my god like americans wave and whatever yeah. and this chick i think she was kind of an older lady she's waving and all of a sudden you see this man come out look pissed grab her and yanks her yep. in and you just hear someone on the radio like she's about to get the shit beat out of her <laughs> like this was yeah bad. that was that was rough i remember that uh, that area was down south i remember it specifically because it was it was a it was one of those areas that was really urban we didn't drive through too many. Yeah. We were we stayed on the outskirts. It was very urban. It was a very busy city. And you, I remember specifically telling me, like, we're getting a lot of dirty looks here. Oh, and yeah. we we actually sped, remember we sped up. We got out of there a little yeah. bit quicker. Not that anyone would have done anything. We were just like the vibes weren't great. You can, we you didn't like we didn't see the demeanor change in some of the areas yeah. that we would go yeah. through. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? You kinda flip, knew. The, yeah. Do you know the flip side of that is though? My my absolute favorite army experience. To, to this day, and I don't remember which site it was. Actually, I think I know which site it was now, but do you recall when we finished the bridge, and it may have been the one where the women were taking the black clothing off because yep. ISIS had made them black? On the ground. And they were, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you recall the family that was living in, there was a couple families living in tents on the far side of the river. When we built the bridge, the little girl came up with a bag of sunflower seeds. Yeah. That is my favorite memory, because she was so sweet. They were actually, like, they were grateful and they were happy. And they gave us sunflower seeds and uh, watermelon. Yeah. Do you remember the watermelon? Well, we also they got. Gave us a, uh, well, no, we got the watermelon. Someone hopped from that of, from that bazaar. We we right. hopped out of a vehicle. It wasn't the same bazaar in front of LCF. It was a different one. Okay. We had someone hop out of the vehicle, run out with like five. The only person with cash, or the lowest we had was five dollar bill, which was way right, more yeah. than what they were going to be charging. But we were like, whatever, five dollars here. Yeah, and, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> whoever it was was like, here you go, and they were like trying to say just take all of them <laughs> and they're yeah, like i remember only need like two wasn't that wasn't that k was that was that corporal k k or, k or specials m i think did it, it. would be something that he would do yeah. specialists and they honest. were just like i take do the money <laughs> yeah they, they gave us like like eight watermelons we were like no, no, trying no, to no. we're like just give us like two <laughs> yeah we just want two that's it yeah no, I, I that was that was a good memory too but yeah i, I still think about that little girl with the, the sunflower seeds oh, and her family like that waving at us because we pull up and there's like all his clothes scattered we asked the interpreter like what the hell happened here and it's all, it's all black clothes yeah. and he was yep. telling us that the people getting out because we went back to that bridge to work on it we built it yeah, so and fair. left and came back and yep. he was telling us that the people that were in raqqa that escaped they were being forced to wear the all black or they were doing it to like blend in to try to get by yep. and when they crossed to them, it was essentially we've made it, we've gotten it out, so they're taking it off yeah. and throwing it. Yeah, I have a I have a great photo from the our side of the bridge where we had started, and there's just black clothes rags, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. It's it's a very bizarre image out of context, but then when you explain it like you did, it's a it's a great story. It's it was again a really positive experience for us. And it gave us some good motivation. Some motivation, yeah, but also what's the term I'm looking for? Perspective. Mm. A life yeah, a little bit, you know. That too. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I want to talk about Matt's experience. So, Dale, you obviously had a... Uncle Phelps. An ex- <laughs> yeah. Dale, you had an experience and a half, a, a half at that one site. But Matt also had an experience that also is an event that I thought about a lot years later. To this day, I still think about it. It still gives me bad dreams because it, it's funny now, man. But, like, at the time, as you know, you and Dale, you can relate even though it wasn't you. It was not funny at the time. It was not a good. It was not a good experience. But... I was laughing within a couple minutes. <laughs> once I saw him laughing, I was like, "All right." <laughs> once Matt was okay, I I laughed a little bit. Actually, no, that's a lie. I didn't. I didn't laugh the rest of that day. I'm gonna be honest with you. I still was freaking out a little bit. <laughs> I'm but sorry. Let's. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. But let's let like we did with Dale's story. Let's let's frame it. So, Matt, just tell me a little bit about what that mission that day. Just some big picture stuff. And then I'm going to get Dale's perspective, and then I'm going to ask you what the hell happened, and we're going to talk. Yeah, about absolutely. <laughs> so this was the site that, if you can remember, there was like that ISIS checkpoint at the bridge. 
with the sign. And you remember we were trying to use a crane that was going to be provided on site via SDF, I'm pretty sure. That didn't yes. work. And I, if you can remember, some of the supports that they were trying to use was like tire, like tire hubs. <laughs> You know, yep. so yep. it was we were just like, bro, we're not we're not doing this. Right. But anyway, so if you think about this bridge, this was a pretty this was a pretty tough one. This this thing was was in bad shape. So you had like almost three huge culvert pipes that ran underneath this bridge that allowed the water. If I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that what, you know, allowed the water to pass through. And then it was just, you know, road over top like a highway bridge. So there was just really not much left. One of the culvert pipes, if you can remember, was probably about 50 meters. Now it had kind of like washed out and was just kind of stuck in the canal. And the, they're the big, the really, really big cylindrical yes. culverts here, right? They're huge. huge. I mean, look up the crane that, that site. Okay, yes. just want to make sure I remember. That's the one that we had to like. You know, it was really sketchy. I was, I was, I was holding on to a destroyed section of like railing, and I was. <laughs> yeah. You were like Joseph, be careful, and I was like. <laughs> no way I can be careful, sir. <laughs> and I was trying to hook it up, you know, but we got it out, you know, anyways, trigger warning. No, I'm joking. But we, we got it, we got it out. But anyway, so there was a lot of moving pieces there. We were doing a lot of like up and down. So of course we ran a safety lines, you know, going down into the bridge site because the bridge was kind of like this, right? It was a pretty good drop. It was probably what, like six feet at least, like down to was, where the destroyed part was. Maybe, it was maybe. a full concrete bridge that had been blown in the middle. Yes. So it was, yeah. it was like the most our, our, one we did. The yeah. tallest of you guys, your your helmet was barely cracking. Yeah. I remember walking up to it from, from the one side. I could only see the tip of your helmet. It was yeah. deep. It was yeah. deep. It was pretty deep. And I can remember you, you specifically saying too, like, hey, be careful because there was so much dirt and shit around there. We didn't know what yeah. was there, you know? Right. So anyways, you know, we had, I had made a trip down, trip up. And so we had, you know, we had the, that purple rope, you know, that tagline that we had that was running down. I don't know what happened, but that I went up and I got some tools, man. And I and it's on camera. If I still got that footage, I'll, I'll check. But I throw the tools down to Sergeant M, Big Daddy, right? And, uh, you know, and it was just like, all right, I'm coming down now. <laughs> and I, from, from what I... The camera's kind of—it's kind of hard to tell, but from what I remember, is I kind of like put my weight on the rope. I kind of shifted right, and then the dirt was so loose that I just—I just went. There was nothing to catch me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I'm in the water, and so if you think about the current was pretty strong there because the was. bridge was causing it to you know to be really strong. So I, I wrapped the rope like around my arm. And I pull myself up, and I'm grabbing onto a piece of rebar and sticking out. And I can't remember who exactly it was that was standing down there, but they grabbed me, and they're trying to pull me up. But I can't get up because my rifle is, you know, slung across my chest at this point. So I'm kind of wedged. And they're also fighting the current. And there's a couple times in the video that the water is, like, catching my ACH. So I'm, my head's, like, getting pulled under the water. And, like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to have to drop this rifle, this kit. Like, you know, I, I'm about to pull the, the, the cord on the ILTV. And, but I'm like, you know, at that time, I was in, thank God I was in good shape. I was in good physical shape. I was able to maintain my own. I stayed calm. I mean, obviously, was I a little panicked? Absolutely. Who wouldn't be? Oh, yeah. But I was yeah, able to maintain control of myself and keep myself above water. I was on a piece of, concrete and rebar and you guys were kind of brainstorming like hey we're gonna have to get that rope down to him right and so i kind of done like this this spider-man scaling technique of i went from like one piece of rubble to another piece of rubble and i think sir probably the biggest concern oh, i'm sorry chad probably the biggest concern was chad. <laughs> That 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 piece of culvert was really close to me so if if i would have yeah. lost control i probably would have ended up kind of trapped in that that was kind of the fear yeah. and the current was strong yeah i'm in full kit ladies and gentlemen by the way so i'm like you know i'm i'm, I'm a weight i'm a brick and water at this point yep so you know i was trying to pull myself up on there was just no way it was it was not going to happen so you guys got the rope down there to me and i'd find i found this piece of debris where i could just kind of like hold on to and i've held on to it with one hand from what i remember and i wrapped it underneath my armpits Right. So you guys could have something, you know, that way I could be pulled to the side. You guys pull me to the side. 
And then you guys pulled me up that the slope of the canal. There was no way I was walking up. I mean, it was it was a pretty steep slope. And I still got Damn. that combat shirt because I ripped it right here on, when I was getting drug up to the side. And I get up to the top and I'm just like, fuck, did that really just happen? You know, like, the, <laughs> you know, did, did the fucking I, I got my bridge and panties wet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I made it. I finally made it. You know, I did what every yeah. Charlie should do. Right. Go go for a dip. I mean, not that, not that way. You're not, yeah, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed way. to go about that way. But so, yeah, man, it was no a real experience. D- Dale, where? What do you remember of that day? Because I, I want to give you where I remember this one very specifically. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure because I because usually during the bridge builds, if I wasn't hands on, then I was running around truck to truck checking on radios and combo shit. And I do have, I think that's this, is that's the same site that we ended up having to the SF guys did a bit at, right? Yep. Yes. So there was a little yes. like hut by the side of the road and then a hill on the other side. You have that video. Yep. And you, post, you posted a lot. Yeah. yeah. I love site. that video. Cause you can see it's a great example of seeing pressure wave off. Cause of remember we yep. spent the night at that little, at the team house yep. area. Yeah. Remember that little, yep. right? and you can see the line of civilian trucks yeah, that too. waiting for us to finish the bridge. Cause they needed to get through. They're all waiting there. They waited like, for three days yeah, for yeah. us to finish but anyway i, I just um, want to throw that in there yeah that was yeah yeah because yeah. yeah we ended up staying at the place for was it a night or two nights that we stayed two nights it was two think. nights yeah, yeah. i'm wanting to say because yeah. on the second day we actually didn't have enough mres <laughs> we had to go yep. past that so, yeah because yeah, we weren't expecting to stay there any longer and yeah. i had to go get some antibiotics oh. for safety right <laughs> <laughs> because i drank some questionable water ladies and gentlemen yeah extremely questionable yeah so dale what do you what do you remember about that so so about that event specifically because pacific that site specifically because that site i also had like a, a different thing that i don't even know if you know about this dealing with like civilians and i ended up having to pull my gun on them do you remember that no we can come back oh, yeah so so we'll pause We'll pause real quick. Tell me about that real quick. Okay. So basically we have the trucks pulled in security like we usually do. And I, if I remember right, I'm at the, at the truck. I take my helmet off. It's like, you know, any other day is hot as shit. And I was trying to eat. So I'm standing in the door. My gun's up in it. And I don't remember why, but someone had been like, hey, remember, I think it was Lieutenant. It said, Hey, let's not load or like don't chamber around when you go out. Just kind of keep your gun ready. Like something weird. Cause I just remember that I didn't have a round chambered. And I because someone had told me not to or something. But this comes into play because it makes it way more dramatic. We 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 may have told you that if you were climbing up on the bridge equipment. Maybe we were yeah. we were still toying with how do we handle you guys being yeah. able to defend your maybe. I, I'm speculating. I don't recall. Exactly. It, it was maybe. some weird circumstance. But after this, I never Follow that rule. You yeah, didn't care smart. anymore. Um, but so I'm sitting there at the truck. My, my rifle's up in the truck and I'm like eating. I'm talking to whoever's in the gunner's hatch because I've been running around doing bridge stuff and combo stuff. And some civilians, because we've been out there for so many days and it blocked off that bridge and said, don't even cross it. They were getting angry. And so yeah. I'm sitting there eating, watching these people crowd up and start getting angry. And I turn around to look at the SDF guys to be like, are they going to handle this? And there wasn't an interpreter nearby and they were literally just laying in the sun. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> so I go over there and I start trying to hand signal, like, Hey, d- d- go away. Like I'm trying to tell them go away. And they start getting like pissed. And now I'm surrounded by like all these dudes pissed and they're getting like, they're yelling and stuff. And of course, I don't know what they're saying. And of course you're like, Oh man, what if one of these guys is like going to try to kill me or something? So I'm like, I'm telling him to get back. I turn around, look at the lieutenant, and I'm like, get someone out here to help me out with this. Whoever was in the gunner's hatch was like, hey, well, before all of this, he's like, hey, can you get those people to back off? And I'm like trying to eat. I'm like, yeah, I guess. And so I go over <laughs> to start backing them off. And so now so-and-so is in the gunner's hatch. I know watching over, but they're not on the ground. So now it's me and a bunch of people speaking language I don't speak, yelling. They're mad. And I'm like trying to tell them to leave. SDF people aren't doing anything. I'm screaming at the lieutenant, please get someone over here that can speak their language to help me with this. I'm getting no assistance from that either. And so I just turn around, look at them, and I get pissed. I run back to the truck. I rack around and just like swing up my rifle. And then they all shut up and walked away. And I was like, all right, cool. And like, I went back to eating. 
Yeah, you know, honestly, I think I was on the other side of the bridge at that point. Probably. I vaguely remember I vaguely remember LT on the radio saying that we have a bunch of people that are getting too close to the trucks and they're yelling yeah. and whatnot. And I vaguely remember talking to I think first sergeant about getting the interpreter to go back across vaguely. The big thing um, was they were getting with <laughs> they were, they were so, getting the Yeah, you're good. Finish your story. Wait, do you have something to add to that? Uh, well, it's just it's something funny, but I want you to finish first. I, I didn't know if you okay, okay. So basically, yeah, be, them being crowded up is fine, but they were now like arms distance from the truck. So now you're worried about like what if one of them runs up and jumps and tries to grab something out of the truck kind of thing. Yeah. That's why I'm like, hey, I just need you to back up. I don't give a shit if you're mad and you want to crowd up. Just do it yeah. over there. And so that right. that's when I was like, you know what? Uh, I know. And I, 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 I remember. Universal language. Drill... You spoke it. You spoke it. <laughs> so I remember a drill sergeant told me, he goes, they may not know. Wherever you go, they won't. They probably won't know English. But everyone speaks click. <laughs> and I was like, all right. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I mean that, that is a that is a tough situation, you're right, because there could be 35, 30 to 40 people there who mean no harm and they're just stressed out, but there's one person who could mean harm yeah. and they're going to take advantage of the chaos. So I I definitely never heard that story. I don't remember ever hearing about racking around or anything like that, yeah, but yeah. I I don't know how she really could have handled it. So I wasn't it I wasn't on your side, <laughs> like I wasn't physically where you were i yeah. can't imagine doing anything different if they weren't listening yeah really but kind of i'm glad you weren't escalation of force really i mean you just kind of showed much, yeah right? no, no, mean, you, that, was, that is that is how you do it uh, you're right that's escalation of force it's you yell was it shout shove shoot yeah you, and it might have got shouted. it might have got you know 2023 or whatever now or whatever we do but <laughs> shout, that's shove, the shove, way shove. that i'm going to do it because that's the way that's effective you know yeah, uh, yeah. i don't give a fuck but that was the same <laughs> no. mission that okay you remember the the NCO that was sent from CJTF? That was we called the, him. Then we called him E like seven. Remember that? And he he wore the mask. He went across to the other side and was like golf. And he was all like crawling and shit. We called him Chris Kyle because he was <laughs> Kyle. You, sir. You, I mean, I mean, Chad. You cannot forget this. <laughs> don't call you know. Call me sir. If you're gonna call me Chad, then call me sir. <laughs> Jerk. I don't remember that guy. His name was his, the dude. He was in the talk all the time. He was from CJTF E seven. Start with an H. Uh, he was. He was. Wait. We called him the Sajota, or not? We called him the CJTF spy. He's a he's a staff sergeant, right? I thought he was E seven. Wasn't he? Was he, wasn't he really sergeant? cool? Or first but, class? I mean, he wasn't a bad dude. It was just that mission in particular where I was Michael Phelps. He was the one that went across on the far side by he himself. Was <laughs> and he was he had his he had his you know his mask up and he was you know he was actively engaged. That, that he was actively engaged. I, I must have been on the other side because we did that because of the weird the weird makeup of our team. Yeah. Me and LT and Sergeant M and First Sergeant would try to divvy up sides of the bridge. So two of us would be on one side, two on the other. Yeah. I have a feeling I was on the other because I don't remember that. I would have been like, Sergeant, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Sergeant H okay? in a way is an Olympic swimmer too. He's an Olympic waiter. You know what I'm saying? He was in the water for a while. Mm. Remember on that one side. <laughs> so I love you, so, by the way. If you're watching this, I love you. <laughs> no, yeah, I think I'm friends with him on Facebook. I, I, and I'm not on Facebook anymore. But so let me, to be honest, I don't think you, I don't think you, you explained the gravity of the situation I as well. Probably as I probably didn't it. because it's survivor's guilt. Okay, I'm just kidding. You, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. no, no, no. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving you shit. I, I think from your, I, first of all, you have video of this. Yeah. If if bro, I'm pretty sure that I still have it. If it is, if, if, so some of the video I transferred to a an SSD, uh, a portable hard drive, and yeah, yeah. some of it was still on the SD card itself. I'm pretty sure that that footage is still on okay. the SD card itself because the last time I watched it was when I was when I came back from Syria, okay. and it was because it was a pretty traumatic it, experience. So I kind of like buried it in the back of my yeah. mind for a long time because one, yeah. I was embarrassed about it, and two, I felt like a like be. a burden, you know. But I realized oh. later on that, like, hey, and I've and I've learned this. The older you get, the more wisdom you get. It's a hundred percent a legitimate thing. No yeah. matter how much you plan or how much you try, things are going to happen that are out of your control, right? Right. And that was just one of the things that we all knew could happen, right? I mean, that's just part of it. There's always a risk involved with anything that you do. Um, I would have been surprised so, if we went the whole time and no one ever fell in. Yeah, honestly, we were always yeah. having to. For better or for worse, we were doing things where we're like, 
the only way we can make this happen is if we hang off this in a very awkward way. So there's yeah. there's a video of one of you holding Purple K by his belt as he reached into a crater where the water was rushing extremely fast. It was, I mean, instant drowning. Yeah. You're not getting out of that. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's literally being held by his by his pants by his belt. I don't know. Who, I think it's Corporal M. Is Pastor M is holding him as he leaned in to either get a measurement. Yep. And I remember being right. Sergeant M and myself were right next. Yeah, I was to him there too. Yeah. I because we were. Yeah. We were all terror. A guy was. I was like. I said it to him. I was like, guys, like, it's not. I don't. I don't care if you're off by a few inches. Eyeball it. And they were like, no, no, no. It's okay. We can get it. And I was like, okay. M. Corporal M. Hold on to him. Like seriously, hold on to him. And he did. I think he even tied himself off to the belt. He also took off his big carrier. Because he did, he wanted to be able to bend down to get it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So like, like we did that stuff all the time, and that was like, man, that that shit made me so that that scared me. I, I, I there's a picture of that out there as well as well as, long, as well as one of the GoPro footages. But from from your experience, Matt, like, that wasn't unique, given everything that was going on. Yeah. But from like my perspective, it was a lot scarier because I remember watching the bridge site and like watching the equipment move, and then I remember out of my peripheral because I I think I looked to the side. Out of my peripheral, I saw you with your arms up because you were moving something, and then I saw you just disappear. Yeah, it was fast. And I looked over, right? And by the time I looked over, though, you were already ten to fifteen meters down the canal. The water was going that quick. But the I, I have part, I had rope burn on my hand from no, you know I, what I'm saying? I, I, I I, and if I if yeah. I hadn't have wrapped it around my forearm <laughs> and kind of done like right. almost like a bicep curl, I, I you know what I'm saying? I'd wrapped it around right. my forearm. I would I would have been gone. Bro, I don't yeah, know. But, yeah. the, but the worst part, the worst part about that was from from me being selfish was that like you were underwater when I looked over and saw you. Yeah, you were underwater. All I saw was this multi cam fuzzy shape <laughs> under the water for way too long as you were going down the canal. I don't, I don't know if you actually realized how long you were under. I was, and then yeah. you popped up. You popped up. Then you went back down, and it was me. I th- I am almost positive it was me and Sergeant. Was he a sergeant? Was Ryan a sergeant at that time, Dale? Sergeant R? Yeah, was he a Sergeant Ryan? B. Ryan B. Oh, 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 oh. I don't yeah. think he was. Think so. ah. Yeah, he, he, I, I'm almost positive it was him and I at the edge of the canal that threw that rope. Because I remember I remember, I remember very somebody throwing it. running. Yeah. Yep. I remember and I was running, and of, I think... I ended up running over, and it was like me. I think by this point, Corporal K comes running over, and, I, and I'm guessing you and Ryan, because we all start... Because I remember... I was like, what what can I do? So I just grabbed the tail end of the rope. So if they if you guys pull yeah. them and let go, I could at least still be an anchor. So Yeah. I think Basically that, all we did was hold the rope in place so you could pull yourself out. You yeah. you walked yourself out of it. Yeah. And I remember yeah. being surprised that you still had your rifle and your armor on. Had everything. Because, and <laughs> yeah, and like some some people might not know this, but most of our plate carriers and like especially in the Army and Marines, there's a there's a tab you can pull. That essentially it falls off of you. It's it's there for a reason. Medics can use it. So, God forbid you had a wound they can't reach. They can pull it off. They don't have to pull it off over your head. It just falls off of your body. Essentially, yeah. it's a nice convenient tab. I fully expect you to pull that. But you came out with your rifle and your armor, and I think it was mostly probably because we were they were able to get you the yes. so quick, and also because yeah. you would you were able to get a hold of something. But I still I'm not gonna felt, lie to you, dude. and I didn't interrupt you, but I still felt that no, no, I was. I was in control enough to realize that there was no need. Like, yeah. if, if I would have got to that point, I absolutely would have done it. But right. at no point, I knew that you guys had me, which was a great yeah. feeling, and that we, we had a control of the situation, but it was a very traumatic experience. And I can tell you that I felt guilty about that for a long time. And that was something that it was hard for me to process probably two years right. after that whole ordeal. Because, you know, you kind of feel like, fuck, man, I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I caused a problem or whatever. But ultimately, man, you know, got me out relatively quickly. And then we were Charlie Mike on with the mission. But still, as a person that's in that situation, you're always going to have that certain level, right? Of like, yeah, fuck, man. You know, I remember uh, remember you being I remember you being embarrassed in the moment. Like, literally, I think by the time we got you out of the water, you were already like, I'm sorry. And we're like. Yeah, it's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and it was one of those things where it's like, dude, there was nothing. Like, it was just, I was doing everything that I could do. And then I, it was just like one of those moments I slipped and fell. Like, you know, and I realized that yeah. later on that it was like, hey, bro, it was just a random event. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There was like, 
happens to everyone. Yeah, yeah. you know. And then, uh, of course, you know, seeing other things, you realize that that thing, right. those things happen. No matter how much you plan or how much you try to mitigate that risk, sometimes it's going to happen. Whether you know, you you, you know. It, you know, I will say too, though, that like, <clears throat> if you had not been able to grab a hold of something to hold you, or if you had, God forbid, and again, I'm not trying to traumatize you again because it was rough. But <laughs> you're good. You're if, good. You, if if you had troubles where in the water, whoever was with was next to me already had rope wrapped in their belt. I forget. I think it was. I think it was Ryan. He already had rope wrapped around his belt, so I could have easily like we could have. We were already doing it push him into the water to grab you and then pull out. Cause he was already securing himself. Like we were just like throw a rope, but also secure it at the same time. It was whoever, I, I wish I could like remember who was next to me, but there was five of us total who were like right there. And I was already next, I was already next to the canal. So I was already there by default. So it's not like I jumped through hoops to come and save you, <laughs> but I was just already there. But the other guys acted really, really quickly. So if you had got my worst fear when you went under the water, at one point you went under the water for like three seconds and it freaked me. It freaked like I, I think about that a lot because yeah. you're under the water for three seconds yeah. and then you stopped moving. So you got caught or you grabbed onto something. You probably grabbed onto something, but you got caught under the water for three seconds, which is way too long to be underwater as far as I'm concerned when you're in full, full <laughs> kit. <laughs> you know? From what I so, can remember, yeah. what was happening was is well, at that point I still had a hold of the rope. And right. I was, but, but my helmet was catching the current, right? And it was, it was, so it was kind of pulling me down like this, but I was pulling, it, it, it was fast and I was pull. thank God I had enough strength. I was pulling myself back towards you guys. And that's when I was able right. to grab onto some of the, the debris from the bridge. And that's ultimately what I, you know, stayed, you know. Focus That's probably on. why to to us you looked like you weren't moving yes. in the water. Yes. It's because you had you had caught something. But that's a good point. I was worried about debris like cutting you up as you as you bounce around. I mean that could have been it could have been so much It was sketchy down there. You know, there was it, a lot of things in the water. It, yeah. In in, yeah. in true army fashion though, or true military culture fashion, you got out, you got to the truck, we took your armor off, we let you catch a breather, and then we immediately started making fun of you. Yeah, it was great. It was great. It was like a Comedy Central row session, and I was like, "Oh you my god, son of a bitches," you know. But yeah, the water wings. Yeah, and you know what's funny though is like no shit, nobody in my like. So I was with you guys through a lot of stuff, and then I go back to my unit, and nobody knows anything that we went through. <laughs> nobody knows anything that we did. I never said a word about it, and probably if some of the guys watch now, they'll probably just now be finding out about it. So I had no, I've literally like talked to nobody about this, right? Until today, like this is probably the first time I might've talked to maybe one or two people. So, you know, it's honestly yeah. a good thing, you know, just talking about it helps, but I, but I'm one of those yeah. people where I <laughs> don't talk about stuff, man. But I came I back, know you know, I came back with all these experiences that not everybody had in my company right. because I was just in the... Well, I guess you could so, say uh, right place, right time, right? I was with you guys. Well, that's that's why I was so eager to talk to you two, though. Like, not only as NCOs in a unit that I commanded that have an extremely interesting insight, but I talked to I talked to a lot of veterans, obviously, all day long, and everyone has these experiences that are different. But <clears throat> the three of us talking openly about two very honestly, they were pretty traumatic at the time. They're pretty pretty jacked up. That obviously. <laughs> still have a legacy effect on all three of us in different ways from different perspectives, just being able to like talk about it and laugh about it. Cause you have to laugh about it a little you're, bit. You're right? absolutely I mean, correct. Like the water, yeah. the water wing dro jokes afterwards. Like I, I, hope, bitch, I think that, yeah, that had to help a little bit. Right. I mean, a little bit cause it's, it's silly, it's goofy and you're okay now and everything, obviously you're, everything's going well, but it does help others to know that like, we're not, they're not the only ones who keep to themselves. I won't lie to you, dude. My mom found out that we had cabs, combat action badges, last like last year, dude. Because <laughs> she asked me, she asked me about something. I forget what the, how the conversation started, but I was like, I think I was talking about you, Matt, and obviously, Dale. I've talked about you before, but I forget what I said. I said something to the effect of like, yeah, I got, I had to, I was going to an event and I was getting my uniform ready. Actually, I think it was my sister's wedding. I was getting my uniform ready. She was like, "What's that one for?" I was like, "Oh, it's the combat." action badge we got that for the ied strike in syria and she was like excuse me I was like, uh, yeah i didn't tell you about that did i so here's the story 
<laughs> yeah. And I went, yeah down the, I went down the exact same path. I went down the exact same conversation path like I did with you guys. Like I was telling about, you know, Dale's experience and obviously our experience on a whole. And she was just like, oh, that's awesome. Like, you- very sarcastic. She was not happy at all. When we were being told. Sorry, Mom, we, we love going- you. <laughs> When we were being told that we were going to Syria, I remember we were told, like, do not, because the way the internet works from yep. Taji, it, it's going to go through servers in, like, Turkey and stuff. So right. I remember yep. being told, do not talk about this. Like, don't yep. tell your Puerto Rico you're going there. And so I all I told my mom was, hey, we're being tasked with to go build this new fob um, in a section of Iraq. And so I said, I won't have internet, but I'm still in a safe spot. Don't worry about it. And so she was like, okay, completely oblivious. I get home. Right. I'm talking to her. And I went, oh, by the way, I was in Syria. And she's like, what? <laughs> yep. Same, dude. Yeah. I, I did the, uh, I think it was like a two week period. I said, hey, I'm going to be out of touch for two weeks as we did that transition. And I don't think I told them either. And so like, my, my dad was pretty smart, though. He was like, I know where you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's fine. Funny you but, say uh, that. That was kind of like yeah. what my family did because when we had that, we had the sat phone, right? That we called back on because we didn't have internet. Before we had this, the, the cool satellites that we, well, yeah. yeah. We had the sat phone, yeah. the Iridium. And I called I and my family wouldn't answer me at first because it was, you know, showing that we were calling like from fucking Hawaii or some crazy <laughs> shit. Yeah. I'd leave a voicemail before they'd answer me the second time. <laughs> Which was like two days later because, you know, we had like a 30 minute window where everybody got like a, you know, few minutes. And uh, it was just really funny. And then when we went on the comms blackout after the cruise missiles were launched because of the nerve gas attack that the Syrian regime had put on their own people, they freaked out because they kind of put two and two together. It was like, hey, I can't tell you exactly where I'm at, but I'm in an area where there's a lot of stuff going on. Love you guys. You know what I'm saying? If you don't hear from me for a while, I'm good. I'll get up with you when I can, but we don't have a means to get up with you on a regular, you know? So they kind of done yeah. the, you know, the math for it, the yeah. math, the we, mathematics. We were, <laughs> we were pretty, we were pretty blessed though, by the American military industrial complex. The fact that we could talk to our families uh, daily when in the middle of nowhere in Syria is pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. The, absolutely. Food, the food was also really good at the challenge. Give props to those guys <laughs> for what they had to work with. They done an absolutely phenomenal job. Absolute phenomenal yeah. job. I mean, you know, because it could have been, you know, three MREs a day, every day, you know? Well, for a while, they had to switch to MREs when that there was like a supply route that was all messed up. Yeah, do there was a time. That? We yeah. started having to do MREs. Like, like it sounds stupid to complain about it, but like, because like, like the chow hall, while it was good, I remember for a lot of us that were trying to hit the gym too after missions, like, think about it. We were waking up stupid early do our mission set stuff, come back. And then we were trying to hit the gym. Yeah. We were burning through calories. Like in there was no, there yeah. were no seconds. No, no it, were exactly. And so we would go there and be like, I'm starving. I'm trying to work out. I'm yeah. trying to feed myself. And then you get like a slice of salami and you're like, Ugh. yeah, so we, <laughs> I lost, I lost a lot of Big weight. Sage. So I ha- yeah. That, that mission where we, where we did the first Acro build that took a lot longer than we hoped. I had that picture when we got back from it where I'm, we're all covered in dirt and Dale, where you started to get a little delirious, I think from the heat. Do you remember you were, there was one day and Matt, I don't know if you know this, but I walked up to Dale and I asked him a question. He was like, and I was like, dude, get in the truck, take your armor off, get in the truck, drink water and eat something. He was, you were, I think it was, I think you were becoming a heat casualty. I was. So I, I, it, I was sitting in a truck trying to eat and stuff and a, a doc comes over medic asked me something so i go to hop out to talk to him and i move my leg in both my thigh and calf i think at the same time cramp and i go oh shit and i bend over and then my whole ab section cramps and i'm like ah, and I like fall out of the truck <laughs> my he's leg like, he's like what's my wrong and i'm like i'm cramping everywhere and then he starts looking at me, he's like dude you're like heat catting right now so he ended up like i made like a little like shelter and I just laid there and he went around grabbing like a bunch of the, if I remember right, he grabbed a bunch of the electrolyte MRE things. Yep. And I just sat there chugging water and chugging those. And yep. then yeah, I ended it up. It looked like Lawrence of Arabia at one point. You had the hood over your head I and you were walking around one, like a zombie. I threw up at one point too, because I was sitting there trying to chug it off so fast that now I went from so, so dehydrated, my whole body's cramping to 
chugging out the ass. <laughs> it's all, it, was it was bad. But butt chugging. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's also that. There's a photo on the on my Google Drive for a Corporal M, Pastor M, throwing up. I think from food poisoning. Yeah, that was during a drive. Yeah, that was during a drive. Yeah, he's just he's got his hands on his knees and he's just yeah. this poor guy. Oh god, it's so funny in hindsight. But yeah, anyway, like I said, I I appreciate you guys being willing to talk about those two events they're pretty oh man they suck in hindsight but but we're it is nice to we're still really yeah happy. well it's also nice to talk about i'm like i can relate to you guys you guys can relate to me and vice versa so like it's it's nice to be it, matt telling that story to someone at toyota may not be quite as impactful because i'm not sure they understand the exact scope <laughs> of what was happening there yeah and that's why i was joking with you about maybe you didn't go into much deep as much detail about how fucked up that was because it was pretty i think that is it's it's almost like a a internal like coping mechanism that you you almost make it like a comical comical scenario right after you look back on it but at that time it wasn't it was real you know and (laughs) the way that you guys reacted was spot on and i'll tell you what too that really shows that you know the brotherhood that you have right to take care of each other how fast and how willing that you are to put yourself in a position of compromise to help your buddy. Right. You know, at no, at no point did I ever feel in my, in my like in, internal being that like these guys are just going to let me float away. Like I knew that some, like something was happening. You know what I'm saying? I knew that somebody yeah. was doing something proactive to try to get me. And, uh, you know, so looking back on it now, man, I mean, just, it's just crazy. I'm just so blessed to be yeah. here. You know, I don't you, you feel the same. Falling in with a better group. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We did have a really good group. I'm trying, we had a really good group. That, as you're saying that, I'm pretty sure it was Ryan, Sergeant B. I swear I remember him already pulling Kid off. It was yeah. like ready. Like That's why I'm saying. I, I remember being right next to the guy who was at the canal, tying off, taking shit off, throwing his weapon down. I, I'm almost positive it was Ryan. I just... And then that um, was not who I was looking at. I was looking at yeah, Matt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And then after he got out, I, I can't remember if it was me or if I was talking to someone, but I think we were already like pulling socks out of our bags that we had brought. Yeah. Because like and, I know whenever I whenever we went out, even if you told me, like if you said, Hey, this is only gonna be a day mission, I would pack three socks. I always would pack yeah. extra. Do, do you remember I was joking about the Black Hawk Down movie? Yeah. We were like, hey. Yeah, remember that whole thing about yep. don't bring MVGs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> like, only bring your front plate. You won't need your back plate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm yeah. pretty sure it was me, or I was talking to someone. We were already like, "Hey, let's start grabbing your extra stuff because he's going to be soaked yeah. now." And we remember Doc came up to us and said he was concerned he would possibly get hypothermia from the sudden change of temperature. So we were like, "All right, well, let's take off our clothes and give it to him." <laughs> like. That's just an excuse. God, you guys wanted to strip down. I know. I get it. I know. Um, yeah. You know, super to attractive. Be naked. Uh, well, oh, yeah, naked, of course. <laughs> no, but yeah. And I, I, you know, you know, I guess there's looking back on it now, I can't thank you guys enough for just doing what you did. But it was definitely one of those experiences that, you know, it, it makes you look at life a lot differently, you know? And yes. when you, when you come that close to what could potentially be, a, you know, a, a life or death situation, puts a lot of things in per, into perspective and i think honestly for me especially being as young as i was at the time you know it was it wasn't until i, I don't know maybe you guys can kind of relate it, it's not until really that it's like maybe when you get back and it's like a couple months to a year maybe two right. that you really kind of start reflecting on certain things right and you're like yes. did i did, like we did that you know what i'm saying or yeah, like yeah, yeah. i, I so am I, you know what i'm saying oh, it's just it's just yeah. crazy you know <laughs> No, be, being completely open, we got back in 2017. 2020, I started having sleep issues. I started going, I started replaying it. Like I was saying, I started replaying the negative things like that. But then also the theoretical instances where they actually were worse, where the worst case scenario happened. It took like a year and a half, two years. Now, granted, I, don't, I had other things going on at the time, but it is weird how the brain does that. It was almost like going out of the army mindset made it more difficult to rationalize and then maybe bury a little bit yeah I, it's kind of like the way i've i've tried to describe it to myself <laughs> well you know um, you, you you do that and then it's like hey welcome back hope everything's good go back to civilian life right go back to yeah, your job right. 
we're cool. You know what I'm saying? You're doing your thing. And it's like, fuck, man. You know, it's a tough transition sometimes. Um, oh, yeah. And it's well, and when- then the tribal aspect. I think yeah. it's the tribal aspect of the of the military, right? When you're with the boys, you know, for lack of a better term, you're going through those situations together, and then you're ripped away from them, and everybody's doing their own thing called life, right? That's mm-hmm. tough. That's really it's really oh, freaking yeah. tough. And I think that was probably one of the biggest things for me was you know losing that support system and that tribal group that I felt like I belonged to, and I, where I felt like that I had a purpose. And then going back right. into a civilian career where, yeah, you know, that's it's something important. It's something, you know, that that, you know, is providing, but it doesn't provide that same level of purpose mentally for me. You know what I'm saying? So that was another that's thing that I had to transition to as well. well. For you, for you, like, so this is something I've talked about with friends a bunch, because like already when you have like reserve and guard deploy, when we come home, we all kind of just go, all right, see you next drill, like whatever. And we we're out. I guess it is what it is. Active duty guys get to come back and then they're like, all right, well, we're still in the barracks together with each other. <clears throat> but for you, it's even harder because like you were separated from your company in this group and then you're separated from that group into us. And then we were pretty much like, all right, we've used you enough. See ya. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then we leave. And so now, like you're saying, you know, that whole water thing where you fell in, no one from your company has an idea no idea like literally yeah. when i tell you like nobody knows about it you know yeah, not yeah. even the co nobody i don't even yeah. think that uh, that that pl fags knows about it so yeah but you know at the same time it was a no harm no foul situation right we yeah, yeah. hey happened we 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 dealt with the situation everything's good we're up on si <laughs> you charlie might you know what i'm saying <laughs> so yeah there was yeah. no harm no foul Another thing I noticed too is my tolerance for complaining is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. shot. It's completely shot. I just do not give a shit if you complain. I don't care. I have such a hard time like understanding sometimes like when when people are whining about certain things like the COVID lockdowns are so so easy. I was like, oh my god, we're back in Syria. What do you know? I can't talk about everything. I can't go over where I want. What do you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> It was it was so like it was odd, but it, I did notice like there were times where my empathy was extremely low because I was like, dude, I saw a dude step on an IED and I saw a dude almost drown. I don't give a shit about whether or not you know you're out of paper towel or toilet paper today. I'm having a really hard time caring, you know. But it, not that that's the right answer. Like that's also wrong. You should you know what I mean like it's, you should have empathy, but. It was one of the more notable, noticeable things that, to this day, I'm still struggling with. I just, just don't care about some of those little things, you know? I totally agree yeah. with you. And, you know, man, when I came back, you know, I, I jumped into a relationship, got married, have a beautiful daughter. And I feel like a nice. lot of the things that I didn't deal with, you know, was a negative influence on those relationships. But I feel like that yeah. the part of me, too, is maturing and realizing, like, hey, it's okay, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. It's okay to talk about things. And like just today, just having this was very beneficial to me and being able to reconnect with people that that is, that is there, that was there with you, you know, and then realizing like, oh, yep. Okay. They feel the same way. So I'm not crazy. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And I feel like too, and and I don't want to ever like, like to some of the guys out there that, that experienced levels of combat that obviously that we didn't, you know, props to you, God bless you. But I feel like at the same time, regardless of, of what you experience, everybody experiences things in different ways, you know? And, yeah. and I feel like with, with, with us, it was more, it was a really psychological thing dealing with those types of, of situations that we were encountered. I mean, we encountered specifically, especially with IEDs because IEDs are right. very, it's almost like in a way like snipers, right? It's a very psychologically thing is a, a demanding thing. You know, it, it's, it's sure. you know, so if that makes sense and I could yeah. be just rambling, but no, no, like you're looking, you're looking, explain, yeah. You look at every rock, you look at every Coke can, you look at every, no. Yeah, it, absolutely. It's, absolutely. It, it makes sense. I mean, after that picture that you shared and Dale shared with the, the, the large, the large I did 70 pound one for a while when I got home, I see like car debris, like a carburetor on the side of the road. I'd be like, what is that? Yeah, I don't <laughs> you know, know if you can remember a, this. Uh, when it's we were conscious. on our way back from one of those bridge sites, I think there was some, a piece of equipment that fell out of the back of the Matt V and we stopped and I told you I'd get out and get it. And I did. And we'd stop kind of, 
I'd say we were probably about 100 meters from a small, let's say, village. You know, there were some people outside, mm-hmm. children and women. And so I got the, sh- I think it was a shovel or pick. Something fell on the back of the mat V. I don't know if you guys remember. We kind of stopped on the side yep, of the road. And you were like, that. hey, Joseph, hey, don't get too close. You know what I'm saying? You're doing your job. And I was like, right, no, no problem. I stayed on the hard ball. And I was like, hey, there's some kids out here. And you're like, hey, you know, throw them a case of water or whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember this. So I go up there, get the case yeah. of water. There might have been maybe a box of MREs too. I can't remember. But I you know, threw it out and I kind of like waved towards them. And then as I'm getting back to the truck, you know, and they're running up and they're just like super excited over this case of mm-hmm. water, bro. And I still think about that type of stuff to this day. And I look at my daughter, right, who's who's yeah. three, God bless her. And I think about, you know, how blessed are we to be in the position that we're in? And then it's like when I, for instance, like when I go through Walmart, you know what I'm saying? You think about, oh, I got the automotive section here. I got the electronics yeah. here. I got the groceries here. And you think about these kids in all the refugee camps that we passed, and you guys remember that, those refugee camps yeah, that we right. passed, people having everything that they own on the back of a trailer, right? And you're talking about six million people that's left the country and, and millions more that's displaced within the country, right? And now the modern day, we got about 900 U.S. personnel there, got 10,000 plus ISIS fighters that are in detention. What are, you know, it's... You think about all these things, like, is it going to be a long-term success, or we're going to look like Afghanistan again, you know, in Syria? And that's the scary part, because everything that we did, all the people that got hurt and killed while we were there, you know, up to this mission, you know, those are the things that I think about, too, that's that's hard to explain to people here, because I call it the American bubble, right? We're, 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 oh, yeah. we're in a position of where... We, we don't really have to worry about a lot of things because we, we kind of have that bubble, right, that we've created. And good thing we do because, you know, that's what makes sure. us great, man. That's why people want to come here. But uh, I didn't mean to ramble, but I was just kind of just trying no, to no, bring no, it no. all together, right? I'm trying to bring it all yeah. together. That these are things that I think about daily that have affected me. And, you know, sometimes you kind of get in that tunnel vision mindset where you're just like, you know, you're thinking about it. And you're like, fuck you know, I hope I hope the Kurds are doing good, right? Or I hope that those yeah. children that we gave the water to are doing good. You know, like what happened to those yeah. kids, right? And did did what what we did was it was it a positive influence in our life? Was it a negative? So there's a lot of things. And I didn't mean to ramble too far with it, but those are just kind no, of thoughts good. that you know I figured you guys might you know kind of share the same you know so, went on as yeah. well. So on on the topic of like looking at, because you said like, oh, is it going to be like another Afghanistan? <clears throat> and it, it it may end up being another. I mean, we've already tried once pulling out, and we remember they got t- tomatoes and rocks thrown at them. But uh, one of the things you have to remember with our deployment is like anything you look at what, what we did, which was build a bridge so people could get out and get safe. Like at the end of the day, even if it ends up being another Afghanistan withdrawal, what we did it mattered. Like maybe in the grand scheme of things, there's other stuff that happened over here, or whatever. But at the very most black and white, people were here. They wanted to get here, so we made this so they could do that. And so, yeah, it's a good point. No matter how bad it gets there, what we did helped. At least you know people were able to get across and then finally change clothes because they felt safe to do so. Right. Anything after that, it's out of our hands. So. Yeah, that is a good point though. Like building a, a bridge is it building a bridge is no, there's no negative reason. Like, there's no negative story unless like you built a bridge and only ISIS used it. In yeah. our case, that never happened. Yeah. The only people who ever used our bridges were the SDF, US co- or slash redacted country coalition that were there with us, and civilians. And for the most part, civilians were the one that gave us the pats on the back. They gave us the food. They were happy. There was a huge positive and. Syria and those areas, besides like the Russians running around doing stupid shit, the civilians are still doing pretty good, at least from what I can tell. And ISIS is hiding, you know, they're pretty much done there. And then maybe in Africa, obviously, they're still running around. But yeah. from our perspective, we weren't kicking in doors and potentially hurting people. We were only doing positive things. So it is something good to look at. For sure. But yeah. Absolutely. Um I'm trying to think of my final thought here. We've been we're actually going on three hours just about. So we've we've it's been a really good chat. Before we we kind of wrap it up, 
I just wanted to, I like to throw it back to you guys. Is there anything that you'd like to bring attention to, or it can be purely selfish. If you're working on anything that's interesting that you'd like people to come check out, let's, let's talk about it real quick. Matt, anything you want to bring attention to either a cause or just something in the news that you think is worth, th- you know, mentioning? Man, you know, I think that ultimately the only thing I can think of is just, uh, you know, be kind to each other, love each other, you know, support each other. If you got any friends out there that you haven't talked to in a while, give them a call, see how they're doing. I think the mental health crisis yeah. in this country is reaching a really critical level. I think it's something that a lot of, of, of us personally have dealt with. So that's something that look moving forward in my life that I'm trying to bring more attention to is just reaching out to friends and family that maybe you haven't talked to in a while that maybe need just someone to talk to, man. You know, because we're all going through different things, regardless of what they are. So, you know, that's that's something that I would like to say as the final thought. Just reach out to friends, family, whoever, right? And just be a little bit more kind to people. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, even us doing this has uh, this was a lot of fun. It was nice to talk Absolutely. about these uh, war stories, but it's been a long time since honestly I have. I can't remember the last time I did. So we should do this. We should do this more often. Honestly, I would love that. Absolutely. Yeah. And how about you, Mister Mister Dale? Well, on that note, yeah. I mean, dude, there's still so many things I can think of that I'm like, man, we never even touched on this. So we can. No, there's so much. You probably there's a, yeah. There's some. Good stuff. We might need a we might need a part three because I can tell you one thing. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be divvying this up into two parts. You sure. probably yeah. should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a good as thing, far though. as things bringing attention to, I think the only thing I would ever bring attention to is uh, sorry. Hmm. Hey, fine. It's energy drink time. Wild power is a hundred seven <laughs> foundation. Uh, which is a cool group, Hunter 7 Foundation. And through them and learning about different toxins that you breathe in and whatever from your military service and what it can cause, I ended up yep. finding, actually, I have a bookmark on here. You can, you guys are, anybody that deployed at any point, this is relevant. You look up this thing called a POEMS report, P-O-E-M-S. If you Google it like Iraq POEMS report and type in like a FOB that you're at, it, it's a it's a periodic occupational and environmental monitor, monitor monitoring summary. It's a report where so right now I have bookmark because I'm using it for a claim for Lafarge Cement Factory Syria calendar years 2016 to 2018. And what it ends up doing is it's a report that breaks down how bad the air quality is and what it could cause, et cetera, et cetera. So for people that if me personally, I ended up now being diagnosed with asthma before deployment. I was running not right before deployment, but like before deployment, I used to run like ultra marathons and stuff, do like a 200 mile relay race. And my team won our division and stuff. And I've never had breathing issues at all. And then recently I started having a bunch of issues that had first started right after we got home from deployment. I was hit, having these weird breathing problems, didn't know anything about it. And finally got looked at and they were like, oh, yeah, you have asthma. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Since when? And so when I was talking to the doctor about it, he was like, I would put my money on. It's the stuff that you breathe in, whether it's all the exhaust. You guys were burning stuff every now and then because like they did do burning stuff when we were there. The just simply the fine particles, like when the dust storms would come through, if that clog gets into your like bronchial airways and all that. All right. So 107 Foundation focuses on helping dudes that get cancer, or not just dudes, but service people getting sure. cancer and helping them out through all those issues that come from that and helping fund them for different things that the VA is lacking on. But along that route, the poems report is very big. If, and I found that out by accident, the poems report. So if anybody's ever curious and wants to look into it more, you got to look those up. Yeah, send me that. I actually follow Hunter Seven on Twitter, and I think they follow me back. I, I'm very familiar with them. They do they do a lot of good stuff, and a lot of it's in coincides with the burn pit registration. Yeah, You're, this is a little bit this is a little bit different. So because when you go for the when you go for the burn pit registry, yeah. they don't necessarily acknowledge this. So when uh, Hunter Seven posted about because I actually I used to when I first started selling stickers, I would, they sent me a stack of postcards and I would put it in with all the stickers I'd send. They're really cool. I've talked to them a bunch. They posted once about going to the burn pit registry so i went and did the whole thing and i called the local like va like burn pit toxic exposure like clinic and they're like they asked me a bunch of stuff and they said yeah we want you to come in and do a physical like exam with us 
So I go do that. And during that, they were like, hey, you know, you've answered these questions kind of weird. Let's do a breathing test for you. Do the breathing test. And then that's how I found out I have issues because I went through all of those things. Because they started asking me, like, did you breathe in this? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, hmm, <laughs> let's get you tested. That's interesting. So I, mean, I haven't tested for breathing stuff. I can't, t- I feel like half of me was like, am I just out of shape? <laughs> but maybe I, I, need I, to- I told them, I was like, look, my breathing's weird when I try to run. But I'm fatter than I was then, so I don't know. <laughs> well, I can tell you right now, we, you know, we we dug some of the pits at KLZ. We did, yeah. you know, yeah. and some of the stuff that was put in there, brother, you know. And then you got to think about right. too. Do you remember the SDF compound that was off that little ECP that we didn't use? They had a constant. It was almost a constant stream, right, of them burning trash or whatever that was kind of coming oh, across yeah. the camp. And then at LCF, you know, I'm down in the tunnels, dude. What, I got a picture that I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna, I'm gonna send to you post interview of me just completely covered from head to toe. Uh, we were pulling the I'm not gonna say the word that I want to say, but we were pulling the really thick wire out of the tunnels down there to use at KLZ, and uh, you know we're probably exposed to some pretty gnarly stuff, you know. And I I, I, I can tell you that that I've I've experienced some issues myself, and then just recently coming back from Eastern Europe, Kosovo, we had a memorandum for the air quality being so poor. Yeah. You know? see, so yeah. it's just, you know. Yep. You gotta watch out for yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Well, so. yeah, no, a lot of we should we should maybe do a part three at some point, talk about some other things here and there, because we covered a lot today. And I again I appreciate your guys' time. This was it was a nice chat. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit a little bit about some of the crazy stuff. I mean, there's probably other stories we can talk into that are or talk about that are humorous in nature and less sub- I peed on, uh, peed on our medic once. I do. I know about that one. <laughs> I know about that one. I could, the way I, the, oh my god, the way I rationalize it in my head is that it was a medical procedure without okay. asking any it questions at all. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> we'll wow. we'll make that a part three. It's just that story to be yeah, continued, just, ladies and gentlemen. To be continued. Yeah, it's like the practicality of how it was accomplished, and also the psychological issues that go behind doing something like. I got that. a bunch of funny East, <laughs> Eastern Europe stories to tell you guys. You know, oh, that's right. Last we year, talk about that. They, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But first of all, I just want to say thank you. You know, for both of you for uh, you. you know talking. It's good to see you both. I'm glad you're both doing well. I'm glad yeah, to yeah, see brother. that the podcast is gaining you know traction as well. It looks really really good. Yeah. And yeah, man, I'd look forward to talking to you guys again. I think it's really constructive. Yeah, man. I want to do a, I really want to do a live AMA, to be honest. Mm. Oh, wanna, yeah. Wanna, that'd be cool. Yeah. I want to do an AMA with some of my, my folks on, on Twitter and elsewhere and just ask about Iraq, Syria, the army in general. Yeah. Talk shit about me if you want, because I know a lot of people would probably want to hear some shit posts for days, your, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun. <laughs> I think it'd be fun to do a live AMA. It'd be exactly like this, but we just we're just chat with people and we can talk about war stories again, but mostly just fielding questions about maybe even your jobs, you know. And uh, but also we gotta talk about the funny stories. So so we'll I'll follow up with you guys about that. But in the interim, definitely put that stuff, the videos and the pictures on a drive. I'd love to I'd love to see those. Absolutely. And beyond that, guys, I'll I'll reach out. We'll do a part three here soon and we'll just dig back into the war stories. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, man. And again, yeah, it's just been great talking to you guys. Good seeing you. Dale, you got an yeah. immaculate beard. Congratulations for you guys oh, exp- escaping. Jealous. Unfortunately, I re enlisted for six more years. So we'll see where it takes. What, what are you at? Now? I'm an infantry squad leader now. I'm an infantry no, squad no, leader. No, I mean, how many years? How many years? Oh, uh, dude, now? holy shit. 10? Yeah. Oh, you're just at your 10 mark right now? Yeah, I'm at my 10 mark. Yeah. Were you in your first contract on our deployment? So it was when we got when we got back my first contract oh, okay. in like twenty it was like twenty eighteen twenty nineteen oh, okay. it was weird man so funny story real quick before we go so when I re so when I reclassed to reclass I had to go back to MEPS bro that's another really? little story in wow. itself but Jeez. the way it worked was I had to fucking do a CIF turn in so I had to turn in all my shit into my supply sergeant I'm like what the fuck and, then, and my recruiter's like yeah man you know. Yeah, dude, you know, it's whatever. And I'm like, you got to do this immediate reenlistment. You're going to have to go back to MEPS. So I go back to MEPS, blah, blah, blah. Then I, you know, I do a three-year reenlistment with no bonus. Within the three years, I'm supposed to reclass, right? Guess what? COVID hits. So I don't go reclass until like literally the last year of this three-year, you know, like extension. But anyways, that's a whole other story in its own. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't want to hold you up anymore. 
No, you're like, fine. Like uh, I said, when there's we do more the, to come. AM, more to come. <laughs> when we do an AMA, though, that'd be that'd be a good time to talk about. Yeah. We can kind of casually chat about you know some of the career stuff that's going on, but we can also answer questions because you never know. There might be some people that are interested in joining, and yeah, absolutely, that could be a good opportunity to ask questions. You never know. Yeah. So, Dale, anything else from you? Any last final words? I, I don't know, man. I'm, I've said a lot. <laughs> You have. Yeah, yeah, probably too much, to be honest. I'm no, just kidding. Get him out. Get him out. I'm just <laughs> no, no. I, I'm just kidding. But I appreciate you guys, and I'll be in touch very, very soon about a, about a follow-up, okay? Okay, sounds Sick. good.